All right, here's an explanation of the empirical rule. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, the fact that this only applies to the normal distribution, so a normal distribution only. In other words, if you have like a binomial distribution or a geometric distribution, any other distribution, this is not going to work for. So this only works for normal. Okay, so the empirical rule itself indicates that 68% of all my observations are within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% are within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% are within three standard deviations of the mean. Okay, so to make this a little easier to understand, I'm going to give you a, an illustration. So I'm gonna draw my graph, just like that. And the mean, of course, is right in the center. And then I'm going to make marks indicating one, two, and three standard deviations on either side of the mean. So on the right, we've got the mean plus one standard deviation, the mean plus two standard deviations, and the mean plus three standard deviations. On the left, we have the mean minus one standard deviation, minus two standard deviations, and minus three standard deviations. And then, of course, we've got our percentages. So the rule looks like this. Within one standard deviation, we see 68% of our observations. Within two standard deviations, we can see 95% of our observations. And within three standard deviations, of course, we see 99.7% of our observations. So to make answering the questions that you're going to be confronted with a little bit easier, I'm also going to show you what this would look like with all of our percentages broken down. Because you need to remember that uh, since this is a symmetric distribution, that means that we also have a situation in which the mean and median are right on top of one another. And that means that 50% of my data lie to the right and 50% lie to the left. So we're always operating under this idea of symmetry being in place. So to show you what I'm talking about a little more clearly, we can break down all of these uh, portions into um, smaller pieces so that we can get a better idea of everything that we're gonna have to find. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna draw another graph here. And oh my gosh, that one was horrible just like the other one I drew. So let's try that again. Okay, so here's my graph again. And again, I'm going to have the mean the mean plus one standard deviation, the mean plus two standard deviations, plus three standard deviations, and then on the left, the same thing, mu minus one standard deviation, mu minus two standard deviations, mu minus three standard deviations. Okay, now we already know that between one standard deviation, that's 68% of my data, and then between two, that's 95%. And then three, that's 99.7%. So I'm just drawing this in a little bit different way so that you can get another idea of the breakdown of the percentages. So let's look at this. If 50% of my data lies on one side and 50% on the other, then I can think of each of these sections as 34% because that's just the 68% between the one standard deviation divided in two. And then I can do the same thing for this right here because that's 95%. So we break that in half and we get 47.5%, which makes each of, each of these um, portions 13.5 because 34 plus 13.5 would give me 47.5 on either side of the mean. So that should make perfect sense. And then these little spaces would be 2.35% 
because that's 99.7% total, that whole uh, picture there, or that whole uh, between, uh, why can I not speak? All of this here, <laughs> I'm just going to draw it. All of this right here uh, would be 99.7%. So if I break that down into half, okay, and then I just, it's just a dividing by two and a subtraction game to figure out what all those little pieces would be. And then, of course, this leftover bit outside of three standard deviations is going to be 0.15%. So this should just help you when you're finding answers. If you'll break it down into halves like this, that should make it a little bit easier to find uh, solutions to particular problems. And also keep in mind that when you're looking at these, all of the percentages will stay the same. These values down here though will change based on whatever the parameters of your problem are.